guys, how's it going? Another video. Uh, we're gonna brew a black IPA, one of the more fuck up styles uh, that I have tried in Victoria, for example. I tried so many beer brewings that they had a black IPA full of astringency. You wanna know how to make it without doing a cold brew, doing exactly how you're supposed to do, mashing your whole grain all the time, the 60 minutes with no bringing any astringency. Also, you want to see how we put wheat into your beer, beer and THC together. Stick around. Hey guys, oh, you know what the video is about, huh? Black IPA with THC, haha! <laughs> if you don't like the THC, just avoid the last part and it make a really wicked black IPA. I guarantee you, you're gonna love it. All right, what we're gonna use is 13 kilos and a half of uh, pale to row. We're gonna use 550 grams of uh, Crystal 120. I'm going to use 740 grams of Munich malt. Roasted barley, 270 grams of uh, chocolate malt, and midnight wheat malt, we only gonna use 80 grams to get that deep black color. All right, guys, let's wait everything, mill everything, get everything ready for tomorrow, and we can, uh, so we can go to brew uh, clandestino, but for now, let's start. Hey guys, rainy day here in Victoria. Well, uh, we're gonna start with a, a black IPA. Uh, when I got here, I started checking a little bit. I did the recipe in a rush. So I think I might put a little bit too much roasted barley. So let's see what happened with a stranger Z. <laughs> let's start. Hey guys, all right. Well, we're gonna get the, um, the hose. We're gonna get the mash done together. And yeah, we're gonna start brewing. All right, we're gonna use uh, 10 and a half gallons of water, all right? Let's start. We're also gonna add four grams of calcium sulfate. Hey everyone, all right. Well, uh, now that we got the hose here, so might as well start filling up what we're gonna use for spark, which is gonna be 10 and a half and we're just gonna get that uh, pot ready and then we're gonna start heat it up or water so we can do our graining and also we're gonna heat up the sparse water as well to leave it like about 80 degrees so by the time we need it, it's about 75 which is the temperature we're looking for okay well we're going to uh fill them up everyone it's been 40 minutes so it's really dark beer so I'm not gonna do iodine test also it's the same grain that I normally use I know in 40 minutes we're right also I check the bricks uh, or with the refractometer I got uh, 21 bricks basically is 1.084 I believe 
So now what I want to do basically is uh, heat up our mash tun to mash out to 75 Celsius and then, you know, transfer it, all that kind of stuff. All right, let's, uh, let's start working. All right, well, uh, 75 Celsius, we, uh, we finished mash out. So what we're gonna do is basically transfer to a, our kettle and start sparching. All right, let's do it. All right, we finished transferring. All we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna start boiling and we're gonna calculate um, hops and all that kind of stuff. All right, let's start work. One hundred and ten grams of magnum. This magnum is at sixteen point four percent alpha acid. <clears throat> we're looking for sixty IBUs, and we're gonna have like fifteen gallon uh, final. All right, so let's add it. All right, everyone, um, we're getting close to the fifteen minute mark. So that's been fifteen minutes left in boiling. So what we're gonna do in the fifteen minute mark? We're gonna add a. I'm literally just checking my freezer, see what I got. So I'll decide to use Citiva, see what's going on, see what it does, like with the black IPA. I only use it with like West Coast. So West Coast IPA, so now I'm gonna do with a black IPA, see what it does. Uh, we're gonna use uh, 60 gram. We're gonna add it when it's 15 minutes left. We also gonna pump the cooling uh, coil, the chilling coil, sorry and we're gonna connect the pumps and everything and basically, you know, we look what we do in every single video, okay? Let's uh, wait it to get it ready. All right, 15 minutes left. We're gonna add a 60 grams of uh, Citiva hop and we're gonna add it now. All right, uh, we're almost done uh, boiling. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna uh, add another 60 gram, or we're gonna get weight and get ready, 60 gram of um, Citiva, Citiva hop again. We're gonna add it as a hop stand. We're gonna add it when we are, uh, while we're cooling, when we're about 80 degrees Celsius, we're gonna add it to it, and we're gonna basically keep cooling until we get the temperature to pitch the yeast. All right, so yeah, let's, uh, get, it, let's get everything ready. All right, we finished boiling. Let's start cooling. We're 80 degrees now. Let's add the hop stand. All right, guys, we're getting close to uh, 30 Celsius. So when I'm in the mark of the 30 Celsius, 25, 30, I start putting the oxygen. So I'm gonna get everything ready, right? Right, we're feeling cooling with about uh, 20 degrees. Let's uh, pitch or just in. Well, uh, we finished. We got a final gravity, oh, uh, original gravity of uh, 1.060. Uh, um, let's see what's going on with the astringency. See if I didn't F it up too much. And yeah, a, a couple days later, we're gonna come back and check where the fermentation goes, do the transfer into carboys, and then is when we're going to do the infuse of THC. We're gonna use bourbon, we're gonna infuse it with it, and we're gonna add it just to one carboid. And I don't want to have like, I don't even know if it's going to work, but you know what I mean, all right? So, for this point, we just got to go and rest. Hey everyone, well, uh, we're here in Clandestino now. What we're going to do, uh, this carboxinate, the tea, um, uh, cannabis. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to get put it in the oven at 245 Celsius. No, 245 uh, Fahrenheit for uh, 
25 to 30 minutes. That's all we need to do. And then after that, we're gonna do, uh, I decide to use bourbon instead of uh, vodka. So yeah, let's go step by step. Okay, for now, let's just start to this carbon scene. I get problem with that word. You guys know what I'm gonna do. Okay, let's do it. So basically, uh, we almost finished this carboxinating, whatever that word is. Uh, what we're gonna do now, we're going to uh, dilute or... What I've been reading is like, if you want the THC to be soluble uh, in water, it won't be possible. So the thing you can do is basically with alcohol. So it requires, I believe, like for my experiments or the tests that have been done in, 7% uh, alcohol. That's what we need. The beer is shy, 6.4, so we're gonna infuse it with the bourbon. Uh, see if we can probably get into there, see what happens. Well, it's just an experiment. Uh, it works in the past. I'm hoping it will work again. So yeah, uh, let's get everything ready. guys uh, we got it here uh, we put it in bourbon so we're gonna let it here rest for a couple hours and um, then I'm gonna do the transfer uh, we're gonna add it to the one car away all right well uh, let's let it rest all right guys well uh, what we're gonna do now we're gonna transfer we got a final gravity of uh, 1010 so now we're gonna transfer and three carboys one of those carboys is the one I'm gonna have the cannabis so yeah, let's get everything ready. All right, everyone, uh, as you've seen, uh, we finished uh, transferring and uh, we infused the THC into uh, bourbon. We added it to only one carboid. We're gonna leave it there for about five, ye five days, or <laughs> years, five days to uh, let it uh, condition it, and then we're gonna transfer it to the kegs, all right? So for now, that's everything, so yeah, let's go rest. Hello, everyone. Yeah, time to keg the beer. Let's get on it. This way, we basically flush in everything through the little pipe to make sure the inside the pipe is clean as well. All right, well, uh, what we're gonna use in this next step is I got one keg full of uh, star sand. So I made a jumper, very simple, two liquid uh, bollocks. And with a hose, we're gonna basically transfer from one keg to another one and then return it into the original keg. And at that point, our, our keg will be sterilized and will be, uh, no, sanit sanitized. So at this point, we can basically transfer the beer into our kegs, all right? All right, what we're gonna do now, basically, I got a carboy with the star sand. So I'm gonna transfer that star sand to another carboid with the siphon. At this point, basically siphon will be uh, uh, sanitized. And at this point, we can basically start kegging our beer. All right, let's get everything ready. Thank you. 
right, guys. Well, uh, 1.0 10. Final gravity was what we were expecting. Uh, no astringency. I thought it would be a little bit astringency, but no, actually, it turns out pretty well. So, yeah, let's let it carbonate and see what happens. Finally, we're gonna finish. I'm gonna try the uh, black IPA with infusion of a THC. Um, let's see. First of all, let's talk about the beer. I really like the the, the foam, the the head. It's pretty nice. The color is really nice and clean. What I mean, clean, clear. You can actually see that like red color on it. Looks beautiful. I don't think you guys can see it as I got light for been like recording this um, and it shot like the light basically hits the glass and you can see that red color it looks really nice smell a lot like wheat <laughs> uh, and a little bit of bourbon being honest uh, let's try it but before that subscribe to the channel activate the notification bell hit that like button and leave your comments, all those single, like every single comment I read it and I, if it's a question, I answer it back. Uh, we're trying to build a nice community and basically the more kind of things we do, more traffic we're gonna get and etc. 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 Alright, so I want to thank to my friend Carlos. He's in Mexico, in Guadalajara, Mexico. He, uh, he follows my channel in Spanish and uh, he offered to make a label for this beer so we can have something that looks nice on the video and it's really nice. It's a really, really nice label. Um, thanks, Carlos. All right, let's try this. Uh, oof. Uh, as you can see in the video, I mentioned that I might put a little too much uh, roasted barley and I was basically afraid that I would have like, a strange see in my beer. Turns out it is. Um, I got some uh, a strange see in the beer. As you know, we only infuse five gallons, 10 gallons that were normal and the other five gallons is the one we put the THC on it. All right, let's talk about the one we put, the, we didn't put the THC on it. So what happened to that one, it has a little tiny, not tiny, a little bit like slightly uh, astringency and that you can feel it, you can taste it, but it's actually no annoying. Uh, what I mean with that is some of the, uh, some beers that I had that is like high astringency on it, you have a couple of sip and it like almost you don't want to have anymore because it's just way too much. And in here it's a slightly there, it's there. I would like not to be present to be honest, but it's there. and. It bugs me, yes, a little bit, but I have drank a couple of liters of that thing and I keep drinking it. It's not like, oh man, I can drink it, it's too strange to see. No, no, no. Oh. Um, eh, and that one, oh, now in this one, the one we do the infusion. So, but because we use bourbon, the bourbon actually balances that astringency pretty well. So at this one, you don't even feel that astringency at all. You just only feel that, um, a, to call a, uh, flavor of the, of the dark malts, you get lots of that, but without getting into the astringency part, and I believe it because bourbon is quite sweet, so that's basically balanced. And in the other 10, this beer tastes lots like wheat. Uh, and the end, it almost tastes like when you eat a cookie or you eat a brownie, something like that, that's less aftertaste that is the, the leaf, is the exact, exact same thing I'm feeling in this beer. But you guys know, um, when you eat a, an edible, it's not like an instantly high, right? Like you eat it and pfft. no, it doesn't work that way. And it also depends on the tolerance of the person, 
which like my tolerance is quite high, I smoke a lot. Uh, not like I smoke a lot, but I smoke like, uh, regularly, let's call it. So a, normally when I eat a cookie, sometimes it takes up to 45 minutes to an hour to actually fill it. So I'm gonna wait what's going on. A, and I had one in the past, I already drank like a, like a liter and to try it and I remember me working on the computer editing videos and I just remember waking up and it was sitting in front of the computer two hours later. <laughs> yeah, I fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I guess it works. Um, well, that's it for, the, for this video. So thank you so much everyone for watching and we'll see you in the next one.